With all the talk of resolutions and what you need to be doing as we head into the new year, we thought we'd offer you seven things you need to stop doing in 2022 to turn your dreams into reality. It's all about getting the balance right and keeping things simple. Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Midlife Mentors with me, James. And me, Claire. We had a week off last week, didn't we? We did. You know what? Sorry if you missed us. It was Christmas. That's our only excuse. <laughs> we, were, we were carefully measuring and cutting our mince pie portions. We were. <laughs> we actually were. We had a bit of stolen, tiny bit of stolen, a little bit of mince tiny pies. Bit, Claire, let's be honest. We had, we had Christmas cake, we had All mince right. pies, we had stolen. Don't have to tell them the secrets of our sugar addiction over Christmas. <laughs> we overindulged. But you know what was great about it is um, just knowing it's once a year, but also knowing what you do either side of that to fix it. So, um, I think Claire's been doing it as well, but I've been doing a little bit extra in the gym, kind of the week before and the week after, just to just to even everything out. I have seen him fl- flunging, flying and flunging himself around. Flunging. Flunging. <laughs> Flocking. I was going to say flung, but then that didn't really work. But um, yeah. Flinging. Flinging. <laughs> That's the word. For? That's the word. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Um, although it's decaf coffee. Very virtuous. But um, yeah, I've seen you flinging yourself around the gym at the end of your workout i wonder what you were doing it's my special complex to burn <laughs> through the glycogen reserves to boost that metabolic rate even higher but in all seriousness the whole sugar thing my goodness because obviously um i'm not drinking james isn't drinking alcohol anymore um at the moment Can't I say like I, we had i mean um amazing tanker eight zero zero um uh we believe that it's for gin other gin vans are available but tanker eight zero zero is just incredible uh, we found um, vermouth is a big drink over here in Spain, particularly up in Catalonia, but they have it everywhere. But we found an alcohol-free vermouth, just a little bit of that with some tonic on ice. Amazing. It was and really then, good. Uh, we got um, alcohol-free carver as well, which is also really nice. Thank and really you. nice with a dash of the non-alcoholic vermouth. It's a, a non-alcoholic <laughs> is party is going this a, on. Is this a um, cocktail-making podcast? Well, maybe we should do. <laughs> A, a non-alcoholic an cocktail free. podcast. Anyway, Let us know if you'd like that. Where I was going with that, people, was um, the sugar hangover. My oh. goodness. Honestly. So it was it was a bit of a sugar fest. I'm not going to lie. Um, for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and Boxing Day. But every morning I was waking up just feeling... Ap- I was feeling really waking rotten. Well, and my... lying in bed shaking no, with I had, rush. No, I had heart palpitations. <laughs> I, honestly, I sound like an old woman. But I was waking James up going, I've got heart palpitations. I've actually... I can't sleep. I'm wired and I've got heart palpitations. Just some sugar. So it's actually a real signal to what that does to your body because um, there was no booze involved at all. That's just sugar, people. So um, quite terrifying, really. Anyway. What are we talking about today? We're talking so, about... Well, are you going to rant about something else? I was going to rant about something else, but we should let people know what we're going to talk about. Okay, uh, then you can rant about something else. So we're going to talk about seven things you need to stop doing in 2022. To turn your dreams into, into a reality. reality. Thank you, Claire. That's all right. So um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Seven things you need to stop doing to turn your dreams into reality. So that is what we're going to be talking about. But first, I'm having my rant. Oh. I've seen some stuff in the UK press about um, articles kind of positioning like how personal trainers are preying on the vulnerable by promoting their services what? for January. Now listen, what? if you don't want the services of, of a personal trainer or a coach, don't have, them. Uh, don't have them. But we're not praying. Like a lot of people, uh, understandably, feel like this is a good time to make a new start, to like get their goals in line. A lot of people feel like they've overindulged over this whole festive period. And they need some support. You know, why are we starting to now shame health and fitness? Because that is what we're at the thin end of a wedge that's starting to happen, I believe. 
Yeah, well, we've had, we're really blessed, really excited. We've got loads of people signed up for the new year because they want want the accountability, the support and the right, the right process basically to go through to get them results and to make them feel better inside and out. So I don't, I've not even seen that story. You hadn't even discussed that with me, that rant, but that is extraordinary. They're even, they're saying we're praying on the, on the vulnerable, people who you know put, putting on uh, pounds over Christmas and feel bad about well, themselves. Well, they're vulnerable if they if we're carrying. Well, they're going to be more vulnerable if they do nothing about it and carry exactly. on getting bigger. Exactly, that's what I was about to say, James. Mm, well, thank you. <laughs> um, so I, what was I about to? Oh yes, one other thing. So you are going to be listening to this. This goes live on the thirty first of twenty twenty one. So the last. The last day of 2021, and what's really exciting, we are doing our 2022 Vision Setting Masterclass again. So we did it at the beginning of this year when it just turned into January. I think that was on the 2nd as well. Um, And it went down such a storm because until we knew this stuff, James and I were just banging our heads against a brick wall, to be honest. There were so many um, goal-setting uh, methods we'd followed, so many coaches we'd followed, all that sort of stuff. But until we actually started living and breathing, some of the stuff that we're going to, we won't be able to go through all of it, but we're going to take you through, we're going to give it a good try to take you through the exact method that we use to start turning um, ourselves from dreaming into manifesting and make, you know, the last couple of years have been amazing for us. So we're going to be sharing what we call the secret source actually in that vision setting masterclass as well the stuff that most of them most of these approaches just completely miss but it is the most important thing and I promise you it's the stuff that's going to be getting you stuck over and over again in self-sabotage and the inner critic and stuff so it's an inside out job we can't wait to do that with you and it's going to be on the 2nd of January Sunday the 2nd of January at 10 a.m uk time it is. And, uh, I I'll think, put the link in the show notes, Put by the link the in the show notes. I think Emma saying we're doing this completely live, so not only will you get yeah. the mask class with us, but there'll be time for your Q&A at the end as well. You can get to interact with us. I think I'm right in saying, Claire, we're not going to send this out as a replay, no. are we? No. So you want to do the, the live thing. Yeah, it's, there's so much power um, in doing this as part of a group. There's a real energy to it, a real fire to doing it. Um, with people at the same time. It's like a collective energy behind your goals. And then you're going to walk away with loads of clarity, confidence, and a roadmap of how to get there in 2022. So you actually finally make those desires and goals a reality because that's what we want for you. We don't want you to quit. We don't want you to let that inner critic and that self-saboteur um, knock you off course this year. So um, we're going to give you the exact process to make sure that doesn't happen. We are so, so excited for that. Really so if excited. you're listening to this in inverted commas live, today is New Year's Eve. <laughs> Happy New Year. If you're catching up the day after New Year's Day, hope the head's not too sore. Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, and we hope to see you all on Sunday. So we're going to talk about seven things you need to stop doing in 2022 to turn your dreams into reality. And the reason we wanted to do this is because there is so much talk um, about adding to your life. You know, there's a real pressure. And actually what we want to say, the vision setting work masterclass on the second is really actually about deconstructing some of the stuff that's not working rather than adding. So a lot of the time we're we're talking about New Year's resolutions. We're like, what can we do? There's this massive pressure to do, 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 more, 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 and add to our lives and add to our stress and add to our pressure. Whereas we wanted to talk about some things that you need to actually start subtracting Mm. from your life in 2022 that will honestly completely shift how you're living your life and how you're feeling in it and how you're fulfilling your potential. Uh, It's going to sound really cliche, but all these relate to like the energy and the energy with which you come at things. So um, the first one is stop striving. Now, I know a lot of you will be like, oh, what? Stop striving. I thought, you know, it's like all about getting and going for it. You know, I always go back to that, you know, a poster I used to see when I was younger about... I don't, we don't want to know about these posters, James. <laughs> no, not my Baywatch poster. No, not your Baywatch posters. <laughs> <laughs> the Hoff in his tight red trunk, though. <laughs> that was on my wall. Um, okay. It was a poster of like, the, the, on, on the plains of the Serengeti, as the sun comes up each morning... The antelope yes. knows it must outrun the lion if it's to survive. The lion knows it must outrun the antelope yes. if it's to survive. Whether you're a lion or antelope, when the sun comes up, Run. you better be running. 
But my response to that is like, what if an animal like the porcupine? It just chills, just gets up. Ah, I'm a porcupine. Nothing wants to eat me. I'm just going to snuffle around, have a sleep. The point is, when we're striving, we're not saying, you know, don't try, don't put effort. It's the energy of striving. It often comes from a place of fear or desperation. Like, I, I must, I must, I must, I must, I must. And you're hanging on too tight, like holding on to sand. When you grip it too tightly, it runs through your fingers. It's about coming at stuff with the energy of like, I want to do this. I should do this. This is enabling me to do better things. Um, I think it, James is exactly right. You know, when we're when we're striving and struggling, we burn ourselves out, and we're not we're not coming from a place of trust in the process, or most importantly, our innate right to have what we desire, because we feel like we have to work for it. But we are already innately deserving of what we desire. Um, and you know, when we're coming from that place, it's like. I need to say this to you, you do not need to earn success and happiness. It's already yours within you. And there's nothing you need to necessarily go out and become to be more. It's just your expression of yourself that you're going after. So this was a massive thing for James and I, but especially me. This is a few years ago now. I've completely burnt myself out. Um, It was coming to New Year's, so I did a post about this. Three years ago, I was dreading New Year's. Because I was like, I just can't bring myself to do all the goal setting stuff again, the vision setting. It's because I had burnt, and James had too, but I'd really burnt myself out from the striving and the struggling and the pushing. Um, And it was because I didn't trust that I was deserving and worthy of it anyway. So that I must do something else and keep going, keep going, keep going to earn my happiness. To earn the right to have the things that I desire. Um, And when I recalibrated and created more balance in myself of, okay, I'm going to be doing this from a place of joy. I'm going to enjoy the process. I'm going to enjoy the journey rather than getting somewhere because the striving is getting somewhere rather than being happy right now with the process as you're on it, on that on that journey. So as soon as I kind of just relaxed and let it flow and thought, okay, I'm doing what I need to do, but I don't need to earn what I desire because... It will flow to me when I get the balance right, when I'm coming from a heart-centered place, not just a mind action orientated place, and I get the balance right, things start to unfold really magically. Mm, does so that true. make did that make sense? It does. Just, you want to be thriving, not striving. Yeah. And just when I say those words, there's a big difference in the energy behind them, right? Yeah. When you're thriving, you're moving into that flow state where stuff is happening. Um, by, and so I just want to make this really clear again by, by saying stop striving I don't mean like stop working stop exactly. the effort it's just about having the balance and being mindful of, of that and getting into that flow state and going with it so you can thrive you can truly thrive rather than feel like you're running to catch up just check in just check in with the energy check in with the energy of where it's coming from does it feel flow does it feel joyous does it feel exciting or does it feel like I'm only going to be happy when I get there I'm only worthy when I get there I'm striving to achieve something. And here's the thing, you will never get there because if you've got that, that energy to you, you will always carry on thri- um, striving rather than thriving. Exactly. So now, number two. Number two. Now, this is a lot of you might, at first listen, some of you might think, oh, a lot of these are a bit paradoxical. They're counterintuitive, but it will make sense. Stop procrastinating. Well, it's all about energy, right? It's all about, it's all a about lot of energy. this is about the energy you're coming from. So procrastinating, when we being say procrastinating, we're not meaning about, you know, if you fall into that striving place and you've realised it going, oof, I'll pull back and I'll just recalibrate and have a rest. No, procrastinating is when you're actually... Avoiding. Avoiding. <laughs> uh, procrastination is a form of avoidance and it can show up, we've done a whole podcast on this, but it can show up in many, many different ways. It's that quest for perfectionism, you know, everything's got to be exactly perfectly right before I launch it or I do it. Waiting for the right time, waiting for the right money to be there, waiting for the right stars in the heavens to align. You know, going, oh, I just want to do one more course or I want to research one more thing. It's just ways of avoiding actually taking action. Mm. So this is the thing. Stop procrastinating and take action. But take aligned action, energetic action that's going to take you not only towards your goal but it's energetically aligned with what your goal is, who you want to become with that goal. Well, the only way to move through fear, because it's always going to be there, but to move through fear is actually to just get into action. It actually is the anecdote to, to fear is moving. Is, antidote. And sorry, antidote to fear is actually... Anecdote? Antidote. I can't get my words out at all today. I need to uh, get my dictionary out. Um is actually to, to start moving in, in line with your goals, like James said. 
But you know, for me, procrastination is is fear of failure. It's fear of failure manifested. It's sitting there waiting for a perfect time and the perfect time to do anything doesn't exist. There will always, always be a reason to put it off. But you know, one of the things we'll say is time is short, friends, um, and done now imperfectly is way better than perfect in 10 years time because that time never comes and with every passing year, you lose even more faith in yourself. Mm, so true, so true. So the next one is stop stopping. Mm. So we've done a whole podcast on this as well, but this is really some of, one of the things, and it's a phrase that a lot of our clients say is embedded in their mind, just stop stopping, stop stopping. Um, because the, the reality is there is no overnight success. Success comes from consistent action over and over and over again. Um, and... That's more important, actually, when the going gets tough because it's, it is easier when the going gets tough and we get sidelined and, you know, life happens. It is, it's within us all to just go, oh, you know, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to quit. It's too hard. But actually, if you can stop stopping at those moments in your life, the rewards are absolutely huge. It's, it's at that time you need to dig deep and stop stopping the most. Um, but, you know, most people want the quick fix, um, but it's also why most people are unhappy and health, uh, unhappy and unhealthy because they can't see it through. Um, and one of the things that we always say about most things is focus on the cost of you stopping, right? What is the cost of you stopping right now, a year from now, six years from now, ten years from now? Um, and we promise you, you will thrive and succeed if you stay the distance and stop stopping. Um, if we look at it in neurological terms, actually, what happens is every time you stop, you're sending a reinforcement to yeah. your old behaviour and your old belief that you want to stop. So let's use it like an example. Some days, like even Claire and I get up and we don't fancy going to the gym, just don't feel like it. But guess what you know? I never do. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I do. And when you go, it reinforces that I am someone who does this thing. This even is something when it's I enjoy. Hard. And it, I always feel better afterwards. But the point is, you know, on the rare occasions that you, I haven't, it makes it much harder to go the next time and the next time and the next time, you slowly start to lose that faith in exactly. yourself and your ability. You're slipping back to the old ways. And I will paraphrase the quote I probably always get wrong. Well, at least you haven't got two words wrong in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was trying to mix, what was it? Flouncing. And Fla- flouncing and flunging. Fl- flunging <laughs> and flouncing. I'm going to try and come up with a moulded version of that. I think you should. <laughs> Well, but you go, go back to your alphabetic spaghetti and work out the words again. <laughs> That's really me. All my little, um, my little words on the... Um, you need to get that on the fridge for fridge magnets. You've get got your here. word of the day toilet paper. <laughs> get fridge magnets for me so I can start spelling words properly. <laughs> um, listen, my, my point was we're not, we're not saying don't rest. <clears throat> it's okay to rest and you should, but just beware. And the quote goes something like this. On the plains of hesitation... Bleach the many bones of the thousands who tired, lay down to rest, and resting died, not knowing salvation lay over the next horizon. Mm-hmm. So that just means like it's fine to rest for a bit, regather, regroup, recalibrate, but listen, momentum breeds momentum. And keep it going, but from an energetic place of moving towards your goal and not coming from that striving place we were talking about earlier. Being consistent wins the day. It's not necessarily about talent. It's not necessarily about anything else. It's honestly about taking those steps every single day and just focusing on the process, not the destination. Um, one of the things I just wanted to say about that, actually, just makes me feel all cute inside when you say that quote out loud, because... Um, this is a perfect example. Like I, James sent me that when we were friends. Um, I think it was in between where we had dated a little bit, but I had stood you up and and just <laughs> been a bit of a pest and a bit of a monkey. So James stayed my friend because he's a beautiful man, and he sent me that quote when I was really, really, really struggling um, at the time to get a lot of my um, coaching, my PT coaching, my nutrition coaching, and all that sort of stuff off the ground. Um, back in Surrey and it was it was a real struggle and I'd taken on a mortgage on my own I was um, not earning enough money to even cover it and I just wanted to to quit and to stop and I was in such a mess I had no money and James sent me that sent me that quote and I just it was honestly that that picked me up and got me going and it saw me through a good few months keep reading mm. that over and over and over again so we need to put that quote oh, somewhere that. it's a beautiful quote <laughs> it is it's amazing so the next one is stop prioritizing everyone else now this is 
a really, really big thing for so many of our clients. You know, once we've got to midlife and we've got all these pressures and all these um, things vying for our time, you've got children, you've got your job, you've got um, potentially aging parents, you've got all this stuff, you know, financial concerns, wealth concerns, you've got all this stuff. It feels really alien to start prioritizing yourself and you're, you're not giving yourself permission to prioritize yourself um, and you don't even know how to. And one of the quotes I saw recently was, um, it really resonated with me because so many of the coaching calls I was having with my, my women, the one-to-ones at that time, was a lot around um, selfishness and ego and it feeling selfish and egotistical to really focus on yourself. But one of the quotes I read was really simple, when you're, not, when you're used to not getting your needs met, prioritizing yourself feels selfish. So it's going to feel selfish when you first prioritise yourself because you're so used to not having your needs met. Yeah, you must give yourself permission to prioritise yourself. Yeah, because actually everyone else, here's the thing, the energy, the half, the cup half full, you're giving from an empty vessel as well and you're not giving the best of yourself to everyone else. So you think it's selfish, but actually it's the total, total opposite. If your energy is depleted, you're going to be cranky, you're going to be um, not focusing properly you're probably not your best at work your best for best partner best for your children so even that little bit of time where you're prioritizing what's important to you i would say your health is the most important thing because that without that you have nothing so once you prioritize that everything else will expand and improve in a way that you can't even understand yet it's we see it all the time it's the opposite of selfish Point five, stop fearing change. This mm. is such a big one. Listen, change is growth. Yeah. So if you're fearing change, you're fearing growth. Uh, and that's never a good place to be, right? The, the danger of the comfort zone. Yes. Change is going to happen anyway. It can't be avoid, avoided. You know, that is one thing that is certain. Anything to certainty are changes, taxes, and death. <laughs> um, without change, you're How not going to... How cheery. No, no, it's true, though. Without changes, you won't feel challenged. And overcoming challenges is what makes us who we are. It gives us new skill sets, new coping skills, new, new coping strategies. It makes us resilient, and it makes us trust ourselves more. You know, every time we take a step into the unknown and we succeed in boldness to take the next step, and then the next step, and the next step, and that's, that's how we do it. It's not, we're not talking about taking massive leaps, just a little bit at a time, yeah. uh, and you can grow and grow and grow, which is the natural human state. Because actually keeping everything the same isn't safety and security to your soul, which wants to expand and to experience itself and to fulfill itself. It's almost like a certain death. And, you know, stop fearing change. Fear is always going to be there. Change is always going to be there. But it is like flexing a muscle. Um, Moving towards change becomes less fearful every single time you do it. And I know that's definitely for us. There's so many things that we do now that, that, I don't know, that we wouldn't have dreamed of doing even a few years ago. But we keep, because we've got more confidence and trust in ourselves to to change and know that the world's not going to fall apart and even... You know, if you over-catastrophize it, most of that doesn't ever come true. You learn to trust yourself. So actually, heading towards change and tackling it straight away is, is head-on is something that we've got used to. And it is something, it's like flexing a muscle. And it's exciting. It keeps life fresh. It does. <laughs> keeps it fresh. Number six is... Stop comparing. Yes. Uh, and this is so prevalent. You know, I've noticed now, I think it must be the time of year, December and January, my feed is full of people telling me how great and amazing their life is. Uh, Just don't believe a word of it, basically. Um, You're seeing everyone else highlight, but you're certainly seeing what what they want you to see. Uh, Many of them are are lying. Some of them them I know, and I know they're lying. Anyway, it's just be careful. Um, The grass is greenest where you water it. That's one of my favorites. I love that phrase. Um, But it is really, really easy, especially if we're feeling a bit low on energy, a bit down in the dumps, um, like we're going into a new year and we haven't achieved what we wanted and we're being down on ourselves, that inner critic. It's really, really easy to start looking at everyone else and thinking, my goodness, why can't I be like that? Why why have they got their life sorted? Why, why are they managing to do what I can't? And honestly, it's... It's probably because you they, they've gone through a lot. We don't we don't know what people have gone through. People don't always tell the stories, and most often they don't. They just put like little cherries on top and tell tell the result. 
But no one tells what's underneath, you know, like that iceberg. No one tells you that the hard graft, the risk, the pain, the sleepless nights, all of that stuff that's gone into making their life um, the way it is now and it won't be perfect and anyone that's saying that their life is perfect and they haven't got any demons and there's not healing that they need to do anyone that's saying that and, and positioning themselves as this enigma um, I wouldn't personally trust <laughs> anyway but also it's it's not real and most of what we see now in the world on social media and the digital world isn't really real so be very discerning be really discerning about how much time you're spending on social media or in, in, looking at digital stuff. It's, it's really, really easy to come off your own lane. Um, and that's why this vision setting um, masterclass is so, so key because it's going to, that we're going to run on, on Sunday the 2nd. It's so key because it's going to get you looking at yourself and what's important to you and what your values are and how you want to express yourself. And there's only one of you. There's only one of you and you have your unique story to sing. So stop trying to be like everyone else. There is no other you. I was going to say that. You are you, you are unique and you are blessed to be you with your own journey to create. Yeah, so stop comparing. It's the thief journey. of joy. It, comparison is the thief of joy. And also when you're feeling like you're going off track and you're starting to compare in yourself to other people, come back to yourself, come back to your home, come back to your centre and think about all the amazing things that you have achieved all the things you've overcome, the journey you've been on and the things that you are grateful for because, you know, it happens to all of us. There are certain things, there are people that have achieved the things that James and I want to achieve and that we look up to. But, you know, I always come back. I, when I feel myself feeling a bit inadequate, you know, I come back and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm not at all. Look at where I'm at. Look at what I have. Look at how I am blessed. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a, fine, it's a fine line between inspiration and comparison. I say it is, it is good to look at people who, have, who you know have genuinely achieved and be inspired by them um, for yourself to kind of take action. But you know, if you find yourself being dragged into this long scroll of comparing, then just stop. And the final one is stop living in the past. Whoop, whoop. Well, I'm sure many of us will want to stop living in the nightmare <laughs> of 2020 and 2021. <laughs> Um, but but it, it's you know, as the Viking said, don't look back. You're not you're going, not going that, that way. way. You know, a lot of us end up. We do end up not taking responsibility for being here and now in the present. Um, and you know, it is easy to become a victim of our past mm. and regurgitate all those memories and all those past hurts and and drag them into the present moment. And here's the thing: as soon as they're in the present moment, they're going to be they're in, they're in the future as well because every present moment. You're, you're living it over and over and over again and you're letting that story define you. Like I would say, think about the story, the story you are telling. What's your story? Because if your story is a whole heap of things that are negatively impacting you right now that are from the past, it's time to start telling a new story and stop living in the past. Yeah, exactly that. You know, our human brain is an amazing thing, but we are hard world. Basically, we're, we're always bouncing you, between... You're struggling a little bit there with your words. We're, bou- <laughs> we're bouncing between the present and the past because the way our brain works is just constantly flick back. It, it's, it's basically lazy software for us. It takes shortcuts. So we'll look back to reference all our past experiences, behaviours, beliefs, and use those to extrapolate forward to what we should be doing in the present. So we're constantly ping-ponging backwards between present and past. Mm. What we want to do is just try and consciously move to be living more in the present and even do some of the great stuff that Claire and I do, like future rehearsal, which is a really powerful way of like, helping set your mm. goals. Yeah, and also the, the, the subconscious mind will always try to prove itself right. So if that's the way it's always been, and these are the things that you've Mm. always believed, it will keep on showing you things that reinforce that belief and that story. So it's it's really about time to take this opportunity to stop living in the past and think about, you know, is that really true? Is that really the story I want to carry on telling, telling myself and the world? What happens if I carry on telling that story what happens if I keep living in the past? Is it time now to rise like a phoenix from the ashes and actually use that stuff to support the person I'm becoming but not be it, not live it, not keep bringing it into the present because then it's going to become your future as well. It's going to become, you know, the next years to come. So 
They are our seven... Seven stop, stop doing things. Stop doing things. <laughs> to try. What is wrong with For us? For 2022. It's certainly not too much sugar or alcohol. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a withdrawal now, isn't it? It's, it's withdrawal from sugar. So we really, really hope you found that helpful. We would love to know... Here's a little challenge for you. We'd love to know what some of your stops... Yes, I like oh. that. Tell us what you're stopping in 2022. Yes. Love to hear that. Yes. Team at themidlifementors.com or you can join our Facebook community, which is free, the Midlife Mentors community <laughs> on Facebook. Wow, the brain really is struggling today. It's fine because you don't need to, darling. Or, I'm going to say Or drop us a message on Instagram. Instagram. He was about to call it Instapig. I was going to call it Instapig. <laughs> it's a very strange thing that James changes the words of things. I think it's quite cute, but some people might say it's Or you can catch me on my TikTok channel. No, no I'm just can't. joking. He calls it Instapig rather than Instagram. I have no idea. Um, where that comes from but um, I'm going to put all the links to all of the stuff that James just mentioned um, in the show notes and our free vision setting masterclass for 2022 is happening on the 2nd of January at 10am UK time and you do not want to miss this opportunity it's so powerful and so exciting see you then in the meantime happy new year happy new year lots of love Yeah. You've been listening to the Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.